biology, chemistry, even technological advancements, microbiology, technology. Science is basically my favorite subject. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Early Coding Show. Once again, my name is David Ogunshola and this is the Early Coding Show. Today on the, whole, on the show with me, I have a young man who has been amazing, doing amazing things, learning to code. And I just want us to talk today with him and see what he's doing, how coding is helping him to think differently, and where his ideas are taking him, what he wants to do with coding. So, welcome to the show, Sopriala. Thank you, Mr. David. So, quickly tell us your name and um, how old you are. My name is Sopriala Sumiari Jaja, and I'm 10 years old. You are 10 years old. How old were you when you started coding? I can barely remember, but then I think around like five, six. So about five, six years old. So you are 10 and you've been programming for the last four years or yes. so. What was the first programming language you learned? Um, Scratch. Scratch. So tell us, what was your Scratch experience? What were you able to create with Scratch? And what did Scratch help you do? How did Scratch help you think differently? Well... I was at a coding club when I first used Scratch and then the first thing that they taught us was basically as in the basics of everything, drag and drop blocks, how to make things work and everything. And I got interested in it and start create, started creating games. So I started creating games, making programs, conversations and everything. So soon I became a master of Scratch. Became a master of Scratch. So what's the most amazing thing you've built with Scratch? Well, so far, I'm not really sure because I can't really remember all all of What's my What's one projects? thing you built that you love so much that you think was that was quite challenging that demanded so much from you? Well, there was this game I made that I think required a rocket to go through a blast of asteroids, but then the asteroids can shoot their own asteroids i'm not even sure how i did that there was this time i remember you made a tic-tac-toe game you didn't know pac-man yes rather. i did pac-man i also made a tic-tac-toe game yeah okay it was at the uh, micro bits competition at the micro bits competition yes. yeah so you use micro bits to make a tic-tac-toe yes and, and then i made a pac-man game with scratch that's actually the best one so far the pac-man game it took me a lot of time to make that game I remember I, I would stay up all night, up to 10 o'clock, just watching countless videos, trying to make sure that my game goes perfect. And honestly, it didn't go perfect, but I made a very big effort. One major thing that did help me in the presentation is that the supposed cheat codes were actually problems with my code. Come again? The supposed cheat codes I mentioned at the intervention yeah. were actually just problems with my code that I had faced. Oh, so you had bugs and you just yes. told them that those bugs were cheat codes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody discovered that. Oh, no. <laughs> nice. I think I remember. I think I have that video of you talking about the, the Pac-Man game. Okay, so after Scratch, what was the next thing you moved on to? Well, after Scratch, after that phase, I think that's around the time I came to Brainy Harvard and started coding. That's when I found out about this blockly thing that I figured out was kind of like scratch. So I got used to it, though it's a little different. So there was a part that I had trouble with. Okay. So and I started doing it on code.org. Okay. And so far, I've actually been going well with blockly. So you've gone through the code.org courses, course A yes. to. I actually didn't start at course A. I started at course C. I started at course C, okay. Because you already I started did scratch. At course C. I started at course C, developed D, E, and finished F. Now you are a master of block programming. Okay, before we go to your next language, how has learning to code made you think differently? Well, learning to code has made, as in, coding is a very strategic process. Okay. Because, as I mentioned before, I, I did have a lot of bugs in my Pac-Man game. And my code was actually very complex. It's bigger than the code that is on the screen right now. It, is, it was very big. It took a lot of pages, a lot of things to do. And it was very complex. I could barely wrap my head around it. So it has helped me think more strategically and more... And it has helped me process more quickly. Because in, a, in order to code, you must not always 
you it's not only just the strategy you need a little speed like for instance there i was on a deadline and if i wasn't able to finish the deadline before the time it wouldn't work even if you're normally just coding it's okay to take a little time but i would say some speed is just a little bit okay okay, okay. um now what are, what's the new language you're learning python when how long have you been learning python A year or two years, I'm not sure. Okay. I, as in like a year, basically a year. So have you created anything with Python? Yes, what is on the screen in front of us right now was created with Python okay. on Rosaria. I've also created some other things on the main origin of Rosaria because Rosaria is just an extension. Okay. I created some things on Code Combat, okay. which, which Rosaria is an extension of. Okay. So Code Combat on Azaria, basically where I've been doing my Python. And then I was originally going to make my Python, my Pac-Man game in Python. Oh. But then I ran into some problems with downloading a Python site that would actually work. Plus the Python site that I already had that we used in school was for some reason not working. So I had to use Scratch instead. Okay, now let's, we've talked about programming, seeing what you've done and all of those. Let's talk about you as a person. Um, what, what drives you? What do you love doing? Well, one major habit I have is exploring, figuring out new things, which is one reason my favorite subject is science. Science all, is your favorite subject? Yes, all types of science. Biology, chemistry, even technological advancements, microbiology, technology. Science is basically my favorite subject. Okay, so what part of science is currently fascinating you? What's, what's new for you? What's currently bursting your head in science? Either biology concerning anatomy or zoology. Zoology. So, how have you brought your current skills, programming, problem solving, and your passion for science? How is it making you think? What, what, what new things are you thinking about? What new problems are you thinking about? Well, as for the science part, I, um, I've been told a lot of times that I'm a very curious child. And then as for coding, like I said, I, like I mentioned earlier, has increased my speed and strategic thinking. Okay. Um, another thing is that from the way I've been coding, it seems it has actually helped. Because in my school, I, I know I graduated from Brainy Hive, I think, yes, this year. I graduated from Brainy Hive earlier this year, and I'm in a new school. Now, this new school, American Christian Academy, is hosting a science fair okay. next year. And there's a form we need to fill containing information on the problem we're trying to solve okay. and a solution. So right now, my problem I'm trying to solve is space junk. What problem? Space junk. Space junk. Space pollution. Yes. Space debris. Um, now that, that, that's new to a lot of people. Can you tell us about space junk? What's space junk and how, how did it become a problem? One, easy way, one very easy way to explain space junk is basically when a rocket goes into the sky and crashes or just stops working, it just lays there. No, it, there there's practically no way to bring it back down to Earth without just some casualties so it just stays there and over time as humans have been advancing we all know about elon Musk and his plan to go colonize mars and everything so countless rockets and everything have been sent up into space since the late since the early 90s if i can remember and it has been piling up and piling up all around the earth's orbit i can i remember a day i actually watched a documentary of how sometimes some debris would get out of orbit and into the atmosphere and then crash on Earth. So debris come back into the Earth's atmosphere? Yes. And you are thinking of solving this problem? Yes. Okay, I know that this is a big, this is a problem. Oh, it's, it's a futuristic problem. It's a problem of the future that people are thinking about. Um, and not many people anyway. So few people even know that this problem exists. But now we know that this is a problem, it's a futuristic problem. What solutions are you thinking about? I think I'm more interested in solutions here. Well, my first and foremost solution, at first, when I first thought of it, was maybe 
a rocket could be sent into space to like lure them in with a net or a magnet. But then I figured out what if that rocket gets crashed too? That okay. would just create more space jump. More space jump, yeah. So um, my idea right now is that maybe we have a giant hook okay. from Earth. Okay. That hook is launched into space. And then the hook has magnetic power in it, okay. as in a giant magnet. So the closest thing there is instantly attracted to the hook. Then the okay. hook is brought back down. And those pieces themselves can be used to make further rockets. So once a rocket crashes, we just bring it back down to Earth and create more. So it doesn't get too much, but then we don't run out of resources because we still have goals we need to meet. So it's a renewable process. <clears throat> Well, I, I see this, this problem is, is one of those problems we call wicked problems in science. Wicked problems are those problems you try to solve and you discover more problems and more problems. Because um, I think data has it that there are, this, this, this debris in space are in millions, over 120 million of them. And you know the problem? They are orbiting the space really fast. You need to check the speed of orbiting. They're not just hanging somewhere there and you take a magnet and you start pulling them out there. They're actually moving really fast. So whatever you're going to do, you must have a device for tracking the objects, know where they are. When an object is in one particular spot, in a second, it's no longer there. So there has to be some. Anyway, I think, have you been to the NASA website? No, I haven't. Though I think you need, to, have, you need to connect with NASA. Though I have some dreams and everything about being an astronomer. You're thinking of being an astronomer? Yes, I I'm think... still like dribbling different sides of science you are still not sure okay. somewhere yes. anyway you're just 10 so you have a lot of time to dribble and think about that but i think nasa has a lot of research on space junk they have some they i think they are tracking some of the larger objects so they know where they are and where they're going to be and there's been some technological advancements in that i think the european space agency is trying to get in one of their abandoned rockets and all of oh, those things okay. so but i'm curious what do you think about this problem that's not the problem that 10 year olds think about well, I just, uh, I remember the day you had a conference talk, I think it was during Science Week, that a conference talk with, um, is it fourth and fifth, about light pollution. Uh -huh, okay. And as I was thinking about light pollution, it led me to space, and space led me to space debris. So I searched it up and found that, and there's this map that I found. And inside them on the map is the earth. And I can see little orange dots all over the place. Okay. All those dots are space debris orbiting the earth. I was amazed to find out that there are actually that many. So I figured out that okay, maybe this could be my science project. Just a mini thing for demonstration. I would love to see that project. I would love to track your project. I would love to know. And I'm sure that probably somebody else is interested to know how Soporiala's science project goes. And I will definitely be giving you updates. I talked, I remember talking about light pollution at the science fair where he was at in, in grade school. And the young man went on to find more problems and discovered space pollution. And now he's thinking of solving space pollution. By the way, I think NASA might need your kind of a brain sometime in the near future. So uh, we might, we should put an application for you to NASA to do an internship. So by the way, NASA, if anybody in NASA is seeing this, this is an open application. We want an internship for a 10 year old at NASA. Um, just tell us what we need to do and we're going to bring this boy to NASA. You need, you, we, we need this kind of brains at NASA. By the way, Sopriala, it's good to see what you're doing. It's good to see the kind of problems you're trying to solve. And I'm sure you're going to be back on the show. We're going to talk about this at some other time. Um, just before we end the show, I want you to just talk to another 10-year-old out there who is thinking, I want to think like Sofriala. I want to be able to do the kind of things he's doing. What should they do? What kind of mindset should they have? What should they start learning? And just talk to other 10-year-olds out there. Well, I learned at a very early age that you need to be a curious child if you want to do all of this. You need to, you need to learn how to try to explore a little bit. Not too much, because trust me, I've had a lot of experiences where I did too much. I remember the day I put toothpaste and water and tried to drink it, thinking my whole stomach will go clean. Not too much, not too little, but 
just have a little curiosity be smart with your curiosity another thing is be determined i i can remember how many times i've been shut down not by other people but then by my creations when they just fail so one two things i would like to take for all the other children out there one be curious not too much not too little and be very determined because look a lot of people who were children at one time have reached their goal michael jackson when he was a child he was already doing performances so one thing that all of all the children out there should take is be curious and be determined thank you all right so thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of the show um I'm going to be bringing Sopriala to you again, and I'm going to be tracking what he's doing. We're excited at the things he's creating, and we want to create more Soprialas out there so that we can have young people who are not just consumers of technology, but contributing to global technology. Once again, this is the Early Coding Show. Thank you for watching. My name is David Ogunshola. Have a nice day.